Okay, we're looking at a Anglo-Saxon burial representation here, one that I've been waiting for some information on for almost well, over 10 years now. Uh, when it first came out, they had touted that it was one of the better ones, and of course I was still reeling on Sutton, who and a, who and a few other things, and um, it kind of really got my attention, and I was hoping it would have come out a long time ago. In fact, I had pretty much forgotten about it but it's because they do such slow and meticulous archaeology nowadays uh, from you know less than a centimeters worth of grade going down through it and everything and anytime anything's found they stop and do certain things and they table it through it anyhow uh, what's shown here is a representation of what it would have looked like and it's uh, known as a Pritwell burial site or the Pritwell Prince and uh, there's a shield uh, with a point that's in the center of it here, some spears that are on the wall, long spears. There's a bedding set up with uh, apparently another bedroll here and an ancient sword laying down here, not with the body apparently. When it was found, the body had disintegrated totally away and all that they had found was some teeth and they were hoping that they could at least get some DNA out of it. Now, after looking at uh, them being able to get it out of mummies and things like that, I wonder if in this moist climate they'll be able to because the body had actually rotted away totally. There was really nothing left, not even what they would call fragments, I don't believe. But um, also on the wall here, you can tell there's a couple of these giant drinking horns that they had that are gold-tipped onto them. Cups, barrels, small barrels that are made, casks if you will, probably containing wine and water and so on. There's a cape or a cow that he had there, more containers for different items, uh, larger bowls, what they thought was a shield perhaps at first which turns out to be some kind of giant disc type thing. These people reclined whenever they ate much like the Greeks and a lot of people did during those times and uh, instead of sitting up at a table Although there is a, if you can make it out here, there's a leather bound little uh, chair that almost looks like a camping chair of today and built on that X method and everything. It's kind of neat. Shows you a technology that we still use today with a fold out chair. I mean, right? And uh, it's got a couple of blankets that go with it and a beautiful ornate painted box that they make a mention of and then a larger chest type thing and I guess this could be used as a table too. There's also on this wall uh, they found a giant water skin, some other wood artifacts and it looked like they could maybe prop this out and make a slight table out of it for something and a stance that's here that looks just like a coat rack. I mean it really looks like a modern day coat rack. Let me get that symbol out of the way there and you can see the bottom of it has a stanza to it. It stands up and then there's also a pot ring which is attached to the side of it. And they're not sure if this may have contained water or perhaps even, uh, you know, onions or something, vegetables uh, to dehydrate like that or whatever because there's really nothing they can find in it uh, that I found through their information on it. But uh, there's also this wall sconce that's right here. Let me go away again. And that wall sconce actually has um, a flagon that's on it and uh, this was one of the things that whenever they first found it they were trying to date the thing at and they also said that it had uh, stuff from faraway places and things like that and I was like oh cool well now we're gonna find out about it and you're gonna do it with me here uh, so another representation of this uh, they said it took 20 oak trees 20 full-size oak trees to have possibly made this that it had to have been from some type of nobility there's a huge cast that's right here and right here on the wall after I move away you'll actually see this weird object they found too. It's a hanging basket. It's like the hanging gardens of Babylon or something but a hanging basket that would have gone on a macrame type hanger probably and no telling what was actually in it either whether they put onions and things and just keeping them up off the ground or what was done with it. But let's look into this because it was touted as being something that was well, rivaling King Tut's tomb, and in fact it's touted back as that because of that statement here. Anglo-Saxon burial in England is compared to a pharaoh's tomb. Archaeologists are expected to reveal to the public what is now believed to be one of the most significant archaeological finds in England in recent decades. They will announce their findings of a magnificent royal burial 
which has been compared to the grave of the famous Egyptian pharaoh King Tutankhamun. It is expected to change how we view Anglo-Saxon England. The barrel was found during a project to extend a motorway, as quite often they find these things, and was discovered by construction workers on a patch of grass next to a congested road. It was not a promising place to find historic treasure as it's near an ordinary pub and a busy supermarket. The discovery was made outside Prittlewell in South End on Sea, Essex, England in 2003. And here we're looking actually at the uh, site itself while it was being excavated. And you can see one of the jugs that's back there in the back, some of the artifacts at the back wall. Here he is trying to work on where the body is. And I believe that is the uncovering of the gold belt buckle. This is the flagon that they said shouldn't be in there. And so let's look further into this. Uh, it was discovered way back in 2003, so we're more than 15 years into it. The Prittlewell burial is a grave worthy of a pharaoh, they say. The workers uh, notified the relevant authorities, which is required by law, and archaeologists began to investigate the area in order to prevent looting. And what they found was astounding. They unearthed a large burial chamber that was replete with many grave goods. The Guardian reports that Sophie Jackson's from the Museum of London Archaeology is stating that it could be seen as the British equivalent to Tutankhamun's tomb, although different in a number of ways. Uh, yeah, it's 1,500 years later. It was made out of wood construction instead of the stone that they had there for a lack of wood and so on. So there's a lot of variations and differences to this. And uh, I, th I think uh, what I was hoping they found along with this type thing was uh, something like the Sutton Who burial. And if they found that mixed with this, then they really could make somewhat of that claim. So... The chamber was investigated for over 15 years by a team of 40 experts and researchers and their amazing conclusions are now being revealed for the first time. The burial chamber, which would have measured about 13 feet or 4 meters square and 5 foot deep, according to the BBC, held a variety of many precious artifacts. So we had a, basically a submerged little room and if we, you know, the picture we were looking at at first looked like an incredible, you know, little uh, a flat, you know, if you will. They had him all set up there. Um, archaeologists retrieved some 40 artifacts from the Anglo-Saxon world and beyond. Among the items that were recovered was an intact lyre, a musical instrument which is decorated with semi-precious stones that came possibly from India, they say, and uh, because of the markings that are on the stones and the way they look like one of the dropa stones that are cut through the middle, but they're actually inset with a garnet. This is a piece of that lyre here that's laid out. Uh, it's called the Prittlewell Burial Remains of a Lyre with a decorative copper alloy, spelled wrong, fitting the, with garnets in the center of it. And hopefully you can see those in here. It's kind of, hmm. There was also found a complete painted wooden box, the first of its kind ever found from the Anglo-Saxon world. The hoard includes coins, drinking horns, a wooden vessel, and a golden buckle was also unearthed. The BBC reports that a flagon believed to have come from Syria or the Syrian area was also among the grave goods. Such riches in the chamber led to the comparisons with the tomb of King Tutankhamun. And if they would have found something like a Sutton Hoo thing along with this, you could have probably made somewhat of a comparison. Here's that neat golden belt buckle that they showed. And this is also that uh, bowl that's been handcrafted, you can tell. And uh, it has the four rings around the outside of it and would have been a hanging type of bowl. And uh, this is that flagon, which really almost looked like some type of pirate thing and almost out of phase with what they were originally dating this thing at, which was like four or 500 AD, something like that. And you're like, well, man, that's... It's quite early, and they they knew it was out of place right off the bat for its style and, and everything. If you look, it's got a flip top, which catches with a set of rings of chain onto the top of it with a loop that actually is able to flip back and forth and toggle onto the lip here. And this form fits onto the top of that, so you can flip it off 
you know, isn't that neat? Anyhow, and they also found coins that are there, simplistic, somewhat faced coins. But you can also see this cross type shape and this mariner's cross and the anchor that it creates whenever you have the double bottom on it. It was already created here from a maritime thing, which is kind of telling for what you find in their gold there also at the time. Because of the nature of the soil, all of the carbon-based material is long ago disintegrated and the burial site was only a sandy pit when it was revealed to the light for the very first time in thousand years, or more than 1,500 years. The remains of the person interred there had also disappeared. Only some teeth remained, but they do have precious DNA. And so I hoped that we were going to see that DNA information in here, but not in this paper, I guess. Carbon dating revealed that the burial was between 575 A.D. and 605 A.D., states the Guardian. This was when the Anglo-Saxons had established a number of kingdoms in the eastern England and had driven the Romano Britons to the remote highlands of Wales and Cornwall. Is the Pritwell burial site the grave of Prince Sisa? Well, then the researchers began to try to identify the person that actually was buried in this remarkable grave because it looks like nobility. Their initial hypothesis is that it was King Sabert, who was a ruler in the east of England in the early 7th century AD. However, Sabert died in 616 AD. According to the Chronicles, and the burial dated from approximately 580 AD, so the researchers then concluded that the person in the burial graves was Sixa, the younger sibling of King Siebert, but this cannot be established for certain at this time. And here is like this burial mound, and you can see it here now denoted, but here's a car just cruising by over here, and uh, a little mound like this. You know what's strange about this is that uh, right off of base housing in Omaha, Nebraska, when I was a kid, we were staying there for a while, my dad was in the service, there's a few of these mounds like this that we used to play on. And I know they could have actually had military workers mound up dirt and then leave it there and then have it grow over with uh, grass. And uh, you know, we, we played King of the Hill and stuff like that on it, but it makes you just wonder what some of these hills that people aren't really aware of. And hey, in this thicket of trees over here, it's a thicket now of trees, but did it used to be a thicket of trees? And is there a bump like this right over there and nobody knows about it? And there's another one right over there in those trees. And there's another one over there. Is there? I mean, it's strange what might be just up under people's parking lots, as I've shown here recently in four or five videos, where they're kind of digging into a parking lot or some plumber's doing something. And they're like, hey, what's this? Looks like a human body. They dig it up and they're like, well, this is from way in the hell back then. Even, even English kings got lost over time <clears throat> pardon me experts from the Museum of London archaeology believe that the person was probably a member of royalty and this gives credence to the theory that it was Saxa it took a large member of men to build the chamber and it required timber from over a dozen oaks and this is an indication of the dead man's very high status locals have called the man the Prince of Pritwell because of the many precious items found with him now, early evidence of adoption of Christianity are found also at this burial site, or it has at least the Celtic style of cross. Among the riches that were found in the chamber were a number of small gold foil thin crosses. This is possible evidence that the deceased was a Christian or at least partially Christianized. These finds are surprising and they indicate that the Anglo-Saxons, or at least some of them, had adopted Christianity even before the mission of St. Augustine in the 7th century AD. The crosses could have been placed there by Sakes' mother, who was a Christian, they claim, from Gaul. According to Sky News, the chamber is the earliest Christian Anglo-Saxon royal burial site so far uncovered. So they have that twist on it there that seems to be showing evident, and here's a couple of those crosses the one on the left is quite bent but as we come down and look at the other you can see how it's been straightened out a little bit more and not quite as bent and uh, 
the crosses were believed to have been placed over the dead man's eyes across his face, one on each. The finding is demonstrating that Essex and London was an important center for the Germanic tribes and that they had very least contacts with Christianity far earlier than people thought. It also shows that the area's wealth in the so-called Dark Ages and that the local population engaged in long-distance trades through that time. Some of the grave goods are going to be put on display over the summer at the Central Museum in South End, and I'd like to check that out. And uh, so this is by Ed Wheland, and there's a small video presentation. Uh, let's take a look. Okay, let's check this out. Two thousand three, from Mola, excavated a small plot in Prittlewell, Essex. They discovered an standing Anglo-Saxon burial chamber adorned with rare and precious objects. Many of its secrets lay concealed way back into the sixth century in Britain. And here we're looking at the Saxon area here in the East Saxons. And there's Prittlewell Mound that they found. 15 years of archaeological research. Enter the burial chamber. I don't think they're going to let us enter into it. I think the idea is to come and see the exhibit itself. Or they're going to turn it into one. But yeah, guys, isn't that neat? Hmm. At least they made a little small presentation like that. And I made a little small presentation about it. And if that DNA and genetic information comes out anytime soon, or a full uh, video of somebody actually looking at this site, showing you what they have developed from the little museum they make out of it, uh, then I'll definitely show you a video of that upcoming. Anyhow, like, share, and subscribe. And enjoy and a lot of more videos coming up on topics much like this for there were two more I found and this was in the sidebar peace